Hi, it's Jan Howell here with another upcycling sewing tutorial. It really is quite amazing the things that you can make from upcycled clothing. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make these bunnies and bears using upcycled fleece jackets, sweaters, and other fabrics. These stuffed animals are quite easy to make. They make great toys for your little ones. They're washable, durable, and I think quite adorable. Let's hop right into the project. Let's go over the other items and things that you'll need. You'll need the pattern downloaded and printed, the pattern pieces cut out, a pair of paper scissors, and a pair of fabric scissors straight pins, a needle and thread. For the bunny eyes, you can get these little buttons. These are just teeny beads. Well, they're buttons actually, but they you could use just a black bead as well, a black seed bead for the smaller bunny. And you'll need some upholstery thread to put the eyes on. A pencil, we'll be using the, the eraser end to help with stuffing the bunny and some embroidery floss for the nose and the mouth. All different kinds of sweaters. They don't have to be um, wool sweaters. And you can see that on this particular bunny, I'm going to use an upcycled fleece jacket that I have taken apart and going to repurpose. This is a sweater that I'm going to use for a smaller bunny and you'll need some fiber fill stuffing and a sewing machine. For the PDF pattern, I'll put the link in the description below. If you're using an upcycled sweater, you want to make sure that you're looking over the sweater and making sure there are no holes in it. And a good way to do that is just to hold that up to the light and just see if there's any holes. You don't want to sew your project and find out that there's a hole in it after you've completed it. So I'm going to show you how to make a big bunny and a smaller size bunny. There are a couple ways to sew the bunny. You can use an existing sweater that has a stripe to make it look like the bunny has a shirt on. Like on this bear, I have made it look like he has a t-shirt on. And that is just another piece of sweater. So there, decide if you want this to be all brown or if you want him to have a shirt on. If you do want to make a bunny with a t-shirt, you'll choose the, the legs, the body, trunk, and the difference is the arm piece. So the arm piece, the top of the arm will be the sleeve and the bottom will be the color of the bunny. If you don't want it to have a shirt, you'll just use the full arm piece and cut the trunk with the same pieces that you're using for the arms and the legs. So the trunk and the top arm piece will be cut at, at a different pattern, a stripe or something fun for a t-shirt. So let's go ahead and cut this out. You'll be cutting out two layers. So this is just a cute sleeve of a upcycled sweater, cotton sweater, that I'm going to use for the body trunk as a t-shirt. So I'll decide which part of the, the sweater I want to use, what color combinations I want to use. I kind of like that green in there a little bit. Cut up the sleeve just to make sure that I'm getting those lines lined up correctly. I 
I'm not going to put a sleeve on this bunny, so I'm going to use the full size arm. You will need to cut four of the arms. You don't want to cut out the arms all the same direction, so I'm going to cut two out this way, and then I'll flip the pattern over and then cut two more out. Remove your pattern pieces and then pin the head piece together. The next thing we'll do is sew the trunk to the legs with right, right sides together. I'm going to change my settings to a small zigzag stitch or if you have a lightning bolt option on your sewing machine, you can use that as well. So I'm going, I'm going to set the width to about two and a half and the length about a one and a half. I'm just using a universal needle or you can use a ball tip needle. And I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance is all. Place those right sides together with the seam allowance folded up and just pin it in place. Sew all the way around and leave this top part open. And then we'll sew the headpiece all the way around and leave the bottom open. And the reason we use a zigzag stitch is so that the seams don't pop when the stretchy fabric is pulled a little bit. Take your time when you're sewing around the corners. Just go nice and slow. And for the crotch, I'm just going to come up to a point, leave my needle down, lift up my presser foot, and pivot. to the point between the ears, leave your needle down by turning your hand wheel towards you, lift up your presser foot, pivot, put the presser foot back down and continue to sew. Sew your arms together leaving this top part open. And we're just going to clip the seams, especially around the corners, so that it turns evenly. And how you do that is we're just going to trim off the excess, making sure not to cut into the seam. And on these curves, just take little notches, little V's, making sure not to cut into the seam. And on this curve, it's really important that you make a little 
V cut there. And when you come to this V, just take your scissors and make a little slit, making sure not to cut into the seam. Now just turn everything inside out. Take your pencil, the eraser end, and that helps poke things through. As you can see, this thicker fleece is a little more challenging to turn. So on a smaller, you can only imagine on a smaller piece how even more difficult it would be. So take, keep that in mind when you're choosing fabrics. So just start by stuffing the legs. It's taking a little bit of stuffing at a time and shoving it in. And this is another good use for your eraser end of your pencil. I'm going to set that aside for a minute and stuff the arms and the head. We're not going to stuff the ears, just the head. You want to stuff it quite firmly and just get it distributed evenly. To make it so the bunny's legs will bend and he can sit, I'm just going to take it to the sewing machine and right where that cross, the crotch point is, we're going to sew a straight line straight across right there. If you need to remove some stuffing to make that a little easier, you can do that. Make sure that you're not having stuffing clear up into there. It'll make it a lot easier. And I'm just going to use that same zigzag stitch. Just try to flatten it out as you sew making your seam right at the top of that crotch there, crotch point. Clip your threads. And then we're going to stuff the trunk. Now we're just going to sew all the openings closed by making, starting at the seam, bringing the needle from the inside out about a quarter inch down from the cut edge and just making a running stitch all the way around and then cinching it up. When you get back to the beginning of where you started, just cinch it up and poke the seam allowance inside. And to make that more secure, we're just going to keep going, st making stitches around the top to reinforce that. You might have to go around three or four times 
just to keep that cinched in place. And I'm just following the same stitching line and then just going back and forth across that little opening just to cinch it in place and keep it tight. So once that is secure, I'm going to make a knot, make a little stitch right by the thread, leave a loop, and wrap my needle around a few times, and then I'll pull it, and that will make a knot. So instead of just cutting it off right there, I'm going to insert my needle again right where the knot is, poke it in somewhere, and then poke it out, and then cut my thread. And we'll set this part aside for just a minute. I'm going to re-thread my needle because that won't be enough thread. And we'll sew the arms and the head up. Same thing, I'm just going to sew around with a running stitch the top of that arm, about a quarter inch from the edge. So once you have it cinched up and it's holding its place, you can knot it. But instead of cutting it off at this point, I'm going to leave my thread so I can attach it to the body. And how to do that? Just start making little stitches around and kind of moving it out of the way and then as you start to pull it and cinch it in I'll move that in closer I'm going to just start taking stitches into the bottom of the head and pulling it little stitches into the body. So back and forth, just in a small area until it feels nice and secure in place. As you can see, I'm taking pretty big stitches. Again, take your stitch when you're finished. Wrap your needle around your thread a few times. Make a knot. Poke it into the head and then poke it out and cut your thread. And apply my arms just right there at the top of the trunk. And you're, you're going to apply it right there on the inside upper of the arm, right at that point, just along the seam. So again, you're just going to go back and forth from arm to the body, catching big stitches until it's secure in place. Now we're ready to put the eyes on the bunny. I like to use upholstery thread. I have double threaded and knotted the thread. You can take the pattern and kind of decide where you want to put the eyes on the head. And I kind of have an idea of where they want to, I want them to go. So I'm just going to make a little stitch right where I want that first eye to go. and insert the, the button or the bead, whatever you're using. And I'm going to stick it all the way through the head to the back of the head. And poke it back through where you 
where the thread is, if you can find that. I just like to put my thumb there and kind of feel around till I can get my needle. And then you're just going to pull it, thread it through the button again. And see how that kind of pulls it, indents it into the head just a little bit, gives it a little bit more character. Pull it through one more time to the back. And then over to the other eye socket. I'm going to thread it through one more time. And once you have it pulled as tight as you want to indent that, so to knot that off, I'm just going to take a little stitch right under the button. Leave a loop of thread so I can wrap my needle around it a few times and pull it. And then just stick the needle back into the head and out somewhere. And cut your thread. We'll embroider the nose and the mouth. Now I'm using a, just a dark brown embroidery floss and I'm using all six strands. You can use a different color if you wanted to. I'm going to decide where I want his nose to be. And I'm just going to take a little teeny stitch right there in the middle of where the nose is and leave a little bit of a thread sticking out. Just barely leave it and then take another little stitch. We'll be embroidering over the top of this. So you won't see that. And then I'll not, I'll just wrap it around it once and pull it. And that, that will knot it off. So what we're going to do is just a back and forth stitch. And then I'm just going to do a straight line down instead of the smile thing here. I'm just going to do a, a straight line like I have on this bunny. So with this type of fleece, it's going to be interesting to see how this is going to pan out, but it might take a lot of stitches to get that to show. But we'll just work on it back and forth. And the stitches are going to be really close together. So what we're going for is something like this. Just depending on the nap of your sweater or fleece, this one, I'm going to have to do a lot more stitching than I would, say, a, a piece of sweater that doesn't have all this nap. So once you get your nose how you want it, come down to the bottom point of the nose, and then I'm just going to do a straight stitch just down a bit. Keeping the thread on this side of the needle. To finish that off, take a little tiny stitch. Leave a loop. Wrap it around once or twice. Pull it tight. So that's a pretty cute face. You can leave his feet like this and his legs like this, but I'm going to just make little tucks so that you have 
a foot. Using your upholstery thread again, thread your needle and take the foot and about two inches from the bottom, from the toes, bend it, make a bend, insert the needle right in the bend. See how those stitches are, I'm taking a stitch on the leg and then down into the foot. Do about three or four stitches and then you can pull it and it will cinch the foot up a bit. So I want it to be a little bit more distinct so I'm going to just do another row. That's where the upholstery thread comes in handy because you can really pull it and it won't break. And once that feels secure, go ahead and Make a little stitch, knot it off. All right, let's do the other side. So you can make clothes for these. This the little fella already has a t-shirt on him so I don't have to make a, a shirt for him. You can add a little scarf, so many fun things, so many different textures and, and really easy to make up. This pattern also comes with a teddy bear head, same process. I'll put where you can get the pattern in the description below. Make sure you're saving your patterns, cutting them out. You don't wanna to have to do this all over again. I have a tutorial with some great tips on how to download, print, and store your PDF patterns. You can find that here. Let's go over how to make the mini bunny. Now the mini bunny you can, if, if you're not doing a separate trunk piece like for a t-shirt, it's going to, you can include this, this whole piece in one so it's you save a step on sewing the neck to the body, which will save some time. I'm using this cute gray upcycled sweater. I'm going to use this cute stripe for her legs and make it look like she has tights on and I'm going to make a cute tutu for her. So let's let's cut it out. Now for the mini bunnies we're going to put it together just a little bit differently. As you can see the head and the trunk are all in one piece. We're going to sew the legs to the body. Place the right sides together and we'll just sew along the bottom there of these two pieces. We'll open that up and then we'll put right sides together and sew all the way around but leave an opening on one side of the body. So we'll go ahead and do that now. I have sewn the trunk to the legs on both pieces and I put right sides together and then I'm going to sew all the starting at just above the seam here I'm going to sew all the way around but stop just below the neck so I can leave an opening there to turn it inside out. Now just stuff the trunk and use a needle and thread to sew the opening closed. And if you want more details about how to do that, I have a tutorial on that that I will link in the description below as well. When you've gotten to the end of the opening, knot your thread, taking a stitch, Leaving a loop, wrapping your thread around, pulling it. Don't cut your thread yet. We're going to now cinch up, stitch around the neck to cinch up and make the neck. So from that point around the knot, we're just going to take little stitches, a running stitch, just up and down all the way around the neck. I'm going to go around a second time and just keep pulling it as you sew to make sure that that's cinched up tight. And then when you feel like it's secure, go ahead and knot off. So there you have the mini bunny. I will go over how to make the tulle skirt in another tutorial. Now I'm going to show you how to make the bunny or bear 
and make it look like it has a t-shirt and a sleeve on it. I'm going to use this upcycled fleece jacket that was my husband's. Now on the outside, the fleece doesn't look so great, but on the inside, the wrong side of the fabric, I really like the texture and the color and I thought it would make a really cute bunny or bear. So I'm glad I saved it. I'm going to make a bear out of this and use this upcycled sweater for the t-shirt. So if you're using a striped piece of fabric, you want to make sure those stripes are lining up and that matches like this. This is on the fold. We're going to place the tip of the sleeve at the top stripe to match there. And we'll cut out two of these and this is the fold. So I should have two pieces that look exactly the same and the same stripe going on. So on the pattern piece, you'll notice that there is a line right here, a stopping point where you're going to sew down the arm and stop there. So we'll take the arm pieces and sew down to that stopping point on both sides. Open that up and flatten out the seam allowance. Take the sleeve piece, bring this flat edge, line it up with right sides facing down, pin it in place, and we're just going to sew along the top there. That's what it'll look like on this side, and that's what it'll look like on that side. I'm gonna trim my seam down to about an eighth of an inch, making sure not to cut into the seam allowance. Then we're going to fold it over like this with right sides together. And then you have your arm piece, and we're going to continue sewing where we left off all the way around, leaving the top edge open. Line up your seams and your stripes. So just go ahead now and follow the rest of the instructions to put them together. On the bear, you'll sew all the way around, leave the bottom open, the same thing, cinch it together. So just follow those instructions. So one other thing that's different on the bear is once you have it sewn around, turn it inside out poke out the ears, make sure they're flat and how you want them. And in, so we're not going to stuff the ears and we don't want stuffing going up in there. We want to have a distinct ear. So you're just going to take your sewing machine and top stitch and make a curve there, the shape of the head on the top of the ear to keep stuffing from going up in there. When you stuff it, the ears will be just separate. And floppy. So there you have it. All of these made from upcycled clothing. A cute bunny, a bear. Thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribing. Click on the bell so you can be notified when I put some new things up. We'll see you next time.